God of the entire universe. And we are overwhelmed by the beauty of who you are. Look at what you have done for us to be able to be reconciled with you. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us. God, you're wonderful and, we're, and you're, 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 you're worthy of all of the praise and adoration. Oh, we're just falling over ourselves. Thankful this day for all that you've made available for us. God, we love you. We thank you for your resurrection power. We rise up with your power, your, your spirit within us, able to make it through everything because you walk with us. God, we give you glory and praise. There's no one like you in all the world. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on. Sing it for me.
Hey, everybody, I love you, Embassy City family. So excited that we have this time to open up God's word. And listen, I'm so excited. Like, you have no idea how excited I am to bring you this word today. I feel like God's given me a prophetic word for so many of us that are going through a season right now of change, a season of transition. And so, listen, you might want to tell all of your friends, you might want to send this message to a lot of those that you love because they might find themselves in the situation that I'm talking about today. And I believe that God has an answer for them. So if you got your Bibles, I want you to lift them up super high. And I want you to make this declaration very, very loud. We stand on God's word for every situation and circumstance that comes into our life. So real, real high and real, real loud. Repeat after me. You ready? All right, let's go. Today, uh-huh, the Holy Spirit is about to speak to me about my brook. What? That's right. The Holy Spirit is about to speak to me about my brook. And after today, I will know and fully understand that the brook that God called me to is not the brook that he wanted me to stay at. And so after today, I will know what to do after the brook dries up. All right, let's go. Yo, let's go. I'm so excited. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to 1 Kings chapter number 17. 1 Kings Chapter number 17, I feel like running around this room right now. Y'all have no idea. First Kings chapter number 17, starting at the first verse. I want to read nine verses in your hearing, uh, and then I'll give you the title of this message. We'll see what the Lord wants to say. Just to let you know up front, this is a two-part message. So this week and next week, I'm going to be talking about this one subject from this chapter in first Kings 17. Here's what it says, starting at the first verse. Now, Elijah, who was from Tishbe in Gilead, told King Ahab, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Then Elijah said, then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook. Go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kareth Brook, east of the Jordan River. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up. For, the, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. And then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath, Near the city of Sidon, I have instructed a widow there to feed you. Ooh, this is so good. All right, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. The title of this message is The Brook Dried Up. Say it again. The Brook Dried Up. Part one. That's my assignment. That's what I feel like God's given me as a word, not only to the residents that that physically attend Embassy City, for many of our extended family now that have been watching us from week to week, 
I believe this is a prophetic word for you. Now, you've been watching us the last four or five weeks. I'm telling you, you're a part of our family now. You're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And we are so grateful that you've chosen to make us part of your spiritual diet. So this message I want to give to every single one of the ambassadors of Embassy City Church is the brook dried up. Bow your heads. Let's pray over the word before we get started, shall we? Holy Spirit, thank you for the brook drying up. Amen. First Kings chapter number 17 is one of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible. I remember as I was studying for this message, I, I shared with my wife, Juliet, that I was going to be teaching from this chapter. And she just immediately giggled because outside of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and talking about the message of Jesus Christ and him being the hope of the entire world. I've probably preached first Kings 17 more than any other passage of the Bible outside of preaching about Jesus, of course. The reason why it's always been a chapter that has drawn me back to its page is because uh, there's something about the story of Elijah that just simply intrigues me. There's something about his life that that um, has always uh, been uh, enlightening to me, that he comes uh, out of obscurity, literally comes on the scene as a as a grown man uh, with this word in his mouth for an entire country that he uh, 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 would, would live in obscurity for I don't know how many years. We're not even given his age. Uh, we know that he is from Tishbe, but he comes onto the scene and spills upon the pages of the text and, and just lets us know that it's not going to rain until I say so. He doesn't even say, thus said the Lord. Can you imagine having such a close relationship with God that God is co-signing on what you say. Elijah is a prophet sent to declare to Israel who has found itself in apostasy, who has found itself uh, worshiping other gods, that, that there's going to be a famine that hits the land because of their disobedience. There's going to be a famine that hits the land because of their disconnection from God. God uses Elijah as the mouthpiece to let the children of Israel know that he wants his people back in relationship with him and he will go to great lengths to do so. A famine strikes the land. But Elijah, having such an incredible relationship with God, is told and instructed to go to the brook Kerry. He tells him where to go after he gives this prophetic word. I want you to go to the brook, carry. I will provide for you there. Can I just stop and say, even in the midst of a famine, even when situations uh, and circumstances seem to be bleak, isn't it amazing that God will always make sure that he provides for his people? He is so faithful that even in the midst of a famine, he is going to make sure that Elijah has something to eat and that Elijah has something to drink. He goes down to the brook Carrot and he is provided there in an absolutely phenomenal and supernatural way. Ravens bring him food, bread and meat twice a day. They're flying in uh, their order. I mean, he, you're talking about getting at home delivery. Uh, uh, this started in the Old Testament where the, the ravens, these birds would literally pick food, put it in their mouth, not swallow it in the middle of a famine, but then fly it over to the person that needed the sustenance. And he had this water coming from the brook. Ravens flying over his head, a brook babbling beneath his feet. Elijah's being provided for by God in a supernatural way. And who wouldn't love this space? 
Wouldn't you love it if you never had to leave your house again, even after quarantine, even after lockdown, if you could just stay home and the checks kept coming, the stimulus checks kept coming every single month to provide for you, that the water bill stopped coming, but the water kept coming from you? Supernatural uh, provision, supernatural sustaining in the middle of a drought. That's what Elijah was experiencing. He was getting used to the rhythm of the birds coming to feed him over his head and the babbling brook beneath his feet. And and, and the rhythm of that was something that he began to, to relax in, to be comforted in, because when you are in the presence of God and been given his provision, you start to just relax and trust in the God of your salvation. But then something happens uh, that just intrigued me. And listen, I told you this is one of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible. But uh, something jumped off the page at me that never hit me in all the years, in the 24 years that I've read this chapter, preached this chapter. It's never hit me the way it hit me for you. And that is God called him to the brook. God provided for him at the brook. The ravens brought him food every single day. The water gave him hydration every single day. And then with four words, everything changes. With four words, everything ceases to be normal. With four words, things take a shift. The brook dried. The brook dried up. The brook dried up? No, 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 no. no. The Lord told me to come here. The brook has dried up. No, 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 you don't understand. I got a word from God. He led me to this very spot and the brook dried up. God told me that he gave me this job and that he opened the door for me when when all of the doors were shut. But the brook has dried up. No, no. God told me to move to this state. God told me to move to this country and and that he was going to bless me. But now the brook is drying up. And I'm telling you, there are some people right now that don't know what to do with the fact that the brook has dried up. I thought I heard from God. I thought that what what I heard was clear. I got I got prophetic words about it. I have it written in my prayer journals and 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 I got three other people to confirm the prophecy that that I trust the words that come out of their mouth on behalf of God. But the brook still dried up. And what do you do? When you find yourself obeying God. In every step that you were supposed to take, but the brook still dries up. See, a lot of people think that those four words are negative. A lot of people would preach this text in a way that would say that that there's there's something that is wrong with the brook drying up. But I'm here to tell you there is nothing wrong with the brook drying up. As long as you know that your God never will. There is nothing wrong with a season coming to an end when you know you still have your God for eternity. The brook dried up. What I love about it is that the statement is made so matter of factly. The brook dried up. It's almost it's almost an inconsequential statement that that just is used for a transition to get Elijah where he needs to go. The brook has dried up. You got furloughed. The brook has dried up. They laid you off. The brook has dried up. They fired you. They just let you go. You you, you had spent so many years there and you thought they were going to be loyal to you in the company, but the brook has dried up. You own the business and you had to call 15, 20 30 employees and let them know that that, that you couldn't keep them on, on the payroll any longer because the brook is drying up. When the brook dries up, you have a decision to make. Will I still trust God 
at this dry brook like I would when the brook babbled? Will I still trust God when things have now ended in this season like I used to trust him when things were overflowing in that season? <laughs> Listen, uh, th th there are three points that I have to this message that I think you should have because there's some things about a brook drying up that you need to know. Uh, uh, and without the brook drying up, there's three things that would never happen that absolutely need to happen for you to continue on your journey in growing with God. So if you're taking notes, the, the header I want you to write is without the brook drying up. You can put a dot, 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 or you can put a, a colon there if you want to. But, but that's how I want you to head it, without the brook drying up. Y'all ready? Okay. Without the brook drying up, point number one, please write this down. Without the brook drying up, you wouldn't move. You heard me. Without the brook drying up, you wouldn't move. And here's what I love that it says in uh, 1 Kings 17 and 9. Just the first word, go. That's right, go. When the brook dries up, you need to go. You don't stand there and start crying about the fact that the brook dried up. No, you listen for the next instruction that God gives you. And the next instruction is go. Because without the brook drying up, we wouldn't move. You would literally be stagnant. There would be no reason for Elijah to move from that place because God is the one that told him to go to the place after. Oh, he's the one that told him to show up at the brook carrot. So how do you know when God gives you a word to go to a place that you recognize the season is over? It's when he stops providing. It's when literally the place that he gave you sustenance dries up. Let me tell you something. Without that brook drying up, we wouldn't move. We would become so comfortable in the season that God has put us in that we would not even bother to ask him what is next. We would set up shop and never move. But God says, go. I'm not going to keep you right here. Because I don't want you to be stagnant. God gives preceding words. God's, God is always making sure that whatever he is calling you to, he is moving you to the place in a way that allows you to grow and be strengthened on your way to the destination. So point number one is without the brook drying up, you wouldn't move. Point number two, please write this down. Without the brook drying up, you wouldn't live. Now, maybe some of you all are thinking, are you, are you talking about I would be dead right now? No, 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 no. There, 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 there's, there's, there's another connotation to this that I want you to understand. Without this brook drying up, you wouldn't live. Well, what do you mean by that? I wouldn't live. You would simply exist. Now, let me, let me give you this. Some of y'all need to write this down. If you do not move when God tells you to move, then you cease to live and you simply exist. Listen to me. While Elijah was at Brith Kareth and while Elijah was being sustained by the ravens and while Elijah was drinking the water, he was living because that's where God told him to be. And anywhere you are that God is, you are living. But anywhere that you are that God is not, you are not living, you are existing. Listen, I'm here to tell you that there are some people that are watching me right now. You are not living right now. You are existing because God's presence is moving on and we become so comfortable in the place that we're in that we don't want to move on to the next thing God has for us. And I'm telling you right now, God is saying, you got to move with me. Because if you try to stay in a place, yes, that I'm, that I'm the one that even brought you to the place. But if you try to stay there after I've moved on, you'll no longer be living there. You'll be existing there. Remember what it says. The first, the, the next two words uh, uh, in that sentence after, after go, the next two words are and live. 
Go and live. Go and live. Not exist. Go and live. Anywhere the living God is, that's where you want to live. Anywhere the living God is not, that is not where you want to be. Listen, I'm trying to tell somebody, God wants you to understand and know that he wants you to live. And sometimes he dries up a season. I feel like preaching now. Sometimes he dries up a whole season just to get you to understand that you're not supposed to live here any longer. That you've gotten too comfortable here. And so I've dried the brook up for a reason to get you into your next season. It is time to go. The brook is dried up. And I only made it dry up so I can get you to the next place that you're supposed to be. Oh, that's so good. I'm telling you, you better call and tell somebody this is a word for somebody right now that is going through. And I'm here to tell you, God is not trying to kill you. He's setting you up for your next life. He's setting you up to live your best life. He wants you to live and not die, to declare the testimony and the declaration of the Lord. You are going to live. You are not going to die. Just follow the next place. He's telling you to go and live. I got that. All right. Point number three. Please write this down. Without the brook drying up, without the brook drying up, you wouldn't grow. You wouldn't grow. You would be limited in your scope and knowledge of how God moves, how God wants to provide, how God wants to care for how God wants to, to expose, we would be limited. And so I, I want you to understand the, the, the process and the system. Without, without the brook drying up, you, you wouldn't move. That's point number one. Without the brook drying up, then, then, then what was point number two? I forgot already what point number two was. I'm too hyped. You wouldn't live. Uh, and point number three, without the brook drying up, you wouldn't grow. This is what you have to understand, that, that, that there's a systematic movement to God getting you to where you need to be. You have to move or you would stay stagnant. You have to move or you would literally be stuck in this mindset that uh, it, it has to happen here. I would just exist. And you have to move so that you can grow. If you don't grow, you wind up limited. So here's what it says uh, in the next few words uh, in chapter uh, 17, verse number nine. It says, in the village of Zarephath, go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. What? You want me to go where? To Zarephath? I'm not going to Zarephath. Zarephath is the hometown of Jezebel. You who God, um, I don't think I need to be in the hometown of the woman who has put a contract on my head. I don't think I need to be in a hometown with a group of people that don't have a covenant with you. Hear me when I tell you, you might be nudged by God to move into an area, to move into a space, to move into a territory, to move into a, 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 a group uh, uh, of people that, that you are completely unfamiliar with. That, that of your own, you would never want to be around. That of your own, you would never vote and say, hey, I, I, I want to be over here with you. But God is trying to grow you. He's trying to develop you. And without that brook drying up, you wouldn't even be open to hearing what he wanted to tell you if what he told you was unfamiliar to you. He didn't say, 
go to one of the territories of Israel. God didn't tell Elijah, okay, the brook's drying up, and now I want you to go to the half tribe of Manasseh. The brook's drying up, now I want you to go to Gad. The brook's drying up, now I want you to go to Naphtali. The brook's drying up, now I want you to go to the tribe of Reuben, to Simeon, to Levi, to Judah. The brook's drying up, so go to Asher. No, he doesn't call anything familiar to Elijah's attention. He said, the brook has dried up and I want you to go and I want you to live where? In Zarephath, a place of unfamiliarity. Zarephath, a place that could be trouble. Zarephath, a place that could be dangerous. Zarephath, a place where you don't think I have any covenant with anybody. I'm calling you to an unfamiliar uh, space and place so that you can grow in your understanding of how I provide for you. Listen to me. The brook dried up. Without that brook drying up, you wouldn't move. Without that brook drying up, you wouldn't live. Without this brook drying up, you would not grow. There's nothing wrong with the brook. And there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that the season has come to an end. God is shifting some things because he's trying to prepare you for the next thing he wants to do in your life. I'm telling you, I don't know who this message is for. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I feel you right now. I'm telling you what I know. This brook is not punishment. This brook is setting you up. For your next blessing. This brook is not because you've done something wrong. This this brook dried up because you've done something right. You obey God and you showed up to the place where he told you to show up. But God never told you that just because he told you to come here, that that's the way he wanted to provide for you for the rest of your life. I, I know somebody's getting some freedom right now because the enemy has tried to lie to you and the enemy has tried to tell you that there must be something wrong with you because you're going through a season where provision is starting to dry up and, and you got laid off from the job and you had to let some people go and you're not making the bonuses you need to make. But I'm telling you what I know. God is setting you up for success. He is not setting you up for distress. You have to trust him. And you have to move when he tells you to move. Go and live. Go and live. Go and live. He's not telling you to go to just exist. He's telling you to go so you can live in the new place he has called you to live. And it might sound unfamiliar to you, Zarephath. Go to a place that you've never even heard of before, Zarephath. Go there. And live. There's something that I want to do for you. There's something I want to do in you. There is something I want to go. I want to do through you, for you. And you cannot do it from here. It's time to go. So let's go. Let's live. Let's go to Zarephath, the place of the unfamiliar. Let's 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 do something a little bit out of the box. Let's do something a little bit uh, uh, extraordinary. Let's let's do something that that takes us out of our comfort zone. Let's let's do something that stretches our faith. Let's let's do something in this season that 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 is unfamiliar. Let's do something in this season that 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 maybe we look crazy doing. But I'm telling you. God's on the move. And we're going to be on the move with him. Wherever he tells us to go, we will go. I'm not intimidated by the brook drying up. As long as I continue to hear the voice of the God that called me to it. Listen, the brook dried up. And there is nothing wrong with a season coming to an end. Let me say, say this to you. Don't fall in love with the way you've been provided for more than you're in love with the provider. I don't know who needed to hear that. 
But, but, but maybe, maybe God wanted to, 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 to break you from being uh, 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 so enamored by how he was providing for you. And reset you to who has always been the provider for you. The brook dried up, and it's not your fault. You've done nothing wrong. You've done something right. Open up your heart. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And let him tell you where to go and where to live. Because wherever his presence is, that's where we want to be. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you through this message? Listen, I think for somebody that's listening to this message, uh, uh, God, God, is, God is doing something on the inside of you. And, and uh, may, maybe, maybe this, this link went out to somebody that doesn't even have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe your friend just sent this to you uh, because you find yourself going through a season right now where uh, you, you've been laid off, you've been furloughed, you, you've been uh, told that the season is changing and, 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 and you're strained in that, in, in that uh, uh, tension. But, but let me tell you something. God loves you so much uh, that he wants to have a relationship with you from the inside out. Uh, this message will, will bless you whether you ever uh, give your life to Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you, the way it will anchor you, if you bring him from the outside to the inside, will change your life for eternity. So according to Romans chapter 10, 9, if we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, the writer, Apostle Paul, tells us that we shall be saved. And so if you would just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, confess that with your mouth, repent of your sins. What that means is to change your mind about the way you've been living your life. I'm telling you, Christ will come on the inside of you and upset your world. For the rest of us, I'm so grateful that you took this time once again to be a part of now our weekly gatherings online. I know God is about to bless y'all in a tremendous way, and I cannot wait to hear the testimonies of how he does it. But you need to know, this week, the brook dried up, and there's nothing wrong with it. Yo, this is part one. I'll be back next week with part two. I love you guys, and I cannot wait to be back with you again. Have a great week. Peace.